Hey, what's up, Rad Fam? Coming at you today with 10 tips for the newbie cycle tourists out there. I figured there's probably a lot of you watching that have yet to go on your first cycle tour. So today I thought I would make a video and just give you my top 10 tips if this is your first time that you're about to head out on a cycle tour. Welcome back, Rad Fam Adventures. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ryan, and this is the Rad Bike Adventure the place where we talk about all things bike touring, bike packing, and bike lifestyle related. So if you're into that sort of thing, or you'd like to be, consider gently tapping that subscribe button. Let's get started with tip number one. Now, tip number one is don't worry so much about the bike, the gear, the gear, this is gonna be representing gear. Don't worry about that stuff so much. It really doesn't matter as much as you think. If you have a bike already at home, chances are you can probably take that on a tour with you. And that might dictate what kind of tour you can do, but you still can do it. My first tour, I just did on a cheap hybrid with borrowed bags and it worked out fine. Even the second tour that I went on with my partner, we just used cheap hybrid bikes again, mountain bikes this time. And we did buy panniers for that second tour, but they definitely were not anything fancy or expensive and everything turned out fine. So really try not to focus too much on diving deep into this crazy research of which bag is the best or which bike is the best. Just go with the bike you already have, use bags you already have. That could mean strapping a backpack on your bike and just heading out for a little weekender, but really try not to get too bogged down with the gear. That can come later after you've established that you really love cycle touring, but your first tour, you don't have to worry about the gear so much. Just get out there, that's the most important thing. Find a bike, find some bags and hit the road. <laughs> Graceful dismount, not really. Can you guys see me? Okay, tip number two for cycle touring newbies, first time on a cycle tour. And this tip is to know thyself. You really should know what kind of tour you would like to go on. Are you more into doing backcountry stuff? Maybe bikepacking is gonna be more for you. Or maybe you're interested in doing rail trails because you really don't like riding along with traffic. Or perhaps you like exploring cities and towns. Whatever it is, know the kind of tour that you wanna go on and make sure that you start planning that kind of tour. You don't have to do what other people like, know what you like, be honest with yourself, and then you can start thinking about what places you'd like to see and where you would like to go and what kind of trails or roads that you would like to ride on. It's gonna make a huge difference if you know what you like, because then you're gonna really enjoy that tour a lot more. Okay, tip number three is plan a shorter trip first before you endeavor on that epic adventure that you're dreaming about. It's really good to do a shorter trip because you can see if you even like bike touring, you don't have to quit your job. It could just be something that you slot into vacation time you might already have. So that could be maybe a two or three week trip. I mean, a one month trip is optimum, I think, for a shorter kind of, a shorter tour that it is a proper bicycle tour. You really can get into the rhythm and see if you like it, but you're not committing to something where you're gonna be gone for a year, where you have to quit your job, two years, however long you wanna go. But again, start small, try a weekend, or try an overnighter trip, try a two or three night trip before you're gonna get into those epic one to two year trips. So definitely start small and work up from there. Okay, tip number four is to choose an already established bicycle route. This is just gonna make it a lot easier on yourself. If you choose a route that already has a map to go along with it, it has route points so you can follow the road instructions. It just kind of gives you literally a map of where to go and what to do and see. And how, it'll tell you how many miles you're gonna go every day, what the terrain is like, it could be something like the Pacific Coast, the Pacific Coast route already has an established route. I know that in the UK, there's a lot of cycle routes. Just look around, even in Europe, there's plenty of cycle paths you can follow. Okay, we are at tip number five now, and that is to choose a place that speaks your native tongue, your native language. Now, again, not necessary, just a tip. When you're just getting started, you wanna eliminate all the things that are gonna cause you to be afraid and give you doubt and give you reason to kind of run away from doing it in the first place. And I think going to a country that already speaks your language 
whether that is you do a tour in your own country or you go to another country that speaks your language, I think it just eliminates a lot of the scariness of, you know, what if something happens and I can't communicate? Again, definitely not necessary, and I do think you can accomplish a lot with body language, but for your very first tour, it is a good idea to choose a place that speaks your language just to make it a little easier on yourself. All right, let's move on to tip number six. <sighs> Focused. All right, tip number six. Did you guys know that in China, this means six? I think that is so cool, right? Could you get one? Yi, er, san, si, wu, liu. Tip number six, schedule it. You have to schedule your trip in some fashion, otherwise it's not gonna happen. So make sure that you put it on the calendar, especially if it's an overnight trip, because those are so easy to just think, oh, I'll just push it to next weekend, push it to next weekend. Make sure you schedule it. And if you can, I would definitely try to bring a friend along. Obviously during social, social distance times, if you have your quarantine or something like that, that works, or maybe another family member. But I will slot into this tip, don't let not having a partner or someone else that's going to travel with you stop you. Solo adventuring is so fun. It's so cool. It's a really great way to learn about yourself and to challenge yourself and to just to just grow as a person, I think. So don't let not having another person go with you stop you. So that's just a side note. But yes, you need to schedule it. And along with that is you should tell some people about your trip. So then it kind of keeps you honest about it, right? This is happening. It's starting to become a reality. But I will add, don't tell too many people because you're going to get a lot of you're crazy isn't that dangerous. There's going to be a lot of doubts that are coming in and you don't want to overload yourself with too many of those doubt voices because it might start to affect you and cause you to doubt yourself and maybe even cancel the trip because you start becoming so afraid of it. Do, do tell some people, get excited about it. Just be wary of who you tell. Okay, tip number seven is to be flexible. You have to be incredibly flexible when you're on tour. Things may not go according to plan and that's okay. It's all right to change things up and take on new opportunities if someone says, hey, actually, this place is really cool. Maybe you should, you should go the other way with me instead or, you know, whatever can happen when you're on tour. The unexpected can be really fun. Some of our best adventures were had when we went down roads we didn't originally plan to take or we took some local cyclist advice and checked out a different route that we really didn't ever intend to ride. So I would just say be open to new opportunities. I'm also going to add to that to have a little bit of a backup plan. Now this kind of goes in conjunction with doing something that's local or not super epic for your first trip. That way, if you decide you really don't like cycle touring and hey, it's not for everybody, then you have some kind of way out. If that is researching, if there's a train that you could take or if someone can pick you up or you know, getting on other types of public transport, Again, even if you don't really intend to ever use this backup plan, it's good to have it there just for your own peace of mind, especially when it's your first time going out on tour. Have a backup plan and also be flexible and take those unexpected adventures and the road less traveled. Okay, tip number eight, and that is to start slow and build up. You are gonna be tired in the beginning extremely tired. You're going to be more tired than you ever thought you could be, but I promise you will get stronger. So just start slow with the mileage. Don't think that you're going to pump out 100 mile days at the beginning, even 50 mile days. It's a good idea to build up to that, especially if you haven't been cycling with weight. So start slow, build up, and I promise the strength will come and you'll start enjoying those hills. That first hill that comes your way might feel impossible. Don't worry, we've all been there. I remember the first hill I ever took on tour, I thought, okay, this is impossible. This is gonna take me 10 years to get to my destination. But it's incredible, day by day, you will get stronger and it's not gonna be as painful and you're not gonna feel as tired. The fatigue starts to get a little lessened and you'll start to really enjoy that feeling at the end of the day, like you really earned it. Okay, let's move on to tip number nine. <sighs> pretty sunset, by the way, really pretty, wow. Oh, so beautiful. Okay, tip number, you are not alone. Well, sometimes you might be, but really all over the world, there are people with the same wants and needs as yourself. For example, they need something to eat and drink and a place to sleep. So wherever you go, as long as you're not in the way back country, you're gonna be able to find those things. What I'm trying to say is the world isn't as scary a place as you think it is. So you should really go out with a positive, this is gonna be an awesome experience mindset. And again, just know you're not alone. And if you need to ask for help, do so. A lot of people are willing to help you 
And I've actually found that when I'm riding around on my bike like this, people come up to me and ask if I need anything. They want to give me money or food and people are really, really generous. For sure, bike touring is definitely an adventure, but it's probably not as scary as you think it is. Okay, tip number 10, here we go. Expect to eat and sleep a lot. This is totally normal. You are burning so many calories, so please do not start counting calories. You need to feed yourself. So eat, 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 eat. You need to fuel your body. This is what's getting you around. You're not putting gas in the car. You're putting, you're putting the food fuel inside of your body and your body really needs it, trust us. So definitely make sure to eat a lot and sleep as much as you need. If you're sleeping 10, 12 hours a night, that is totally normal for a cycle tourist. And Darren also wanted me to add this tip. Darren is my partner in adventure. And she said, if you're ever feeling tired or angry or you're questioning why in the heck you're even doing this trip, ask yourself when was the last time I ate <laughs> being tangry is a real thing when you're on tour so make sure to fuel your body all right we're at the end of the video everybody thank you so much for watching I hope that you found those tips helpful here's a little bonus tip for you please just do the tour that you would like to do and go to the places that you would like to most cycle. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing or comparing yourself and thinking, oh, my trip isn't gonna be epic enough or it's not gonna be cool enough. Your trip is gonna be amazing and it's gonna, it's gonna be incredible, it's gonna be life-changing. And I think that if you've watched this far in the video, this is something you really wanna do and you should just go for it. All right, we are totally losing light now. So give us a thumbs up if you liked that video, you made it this far. Subscribe for more content if you wanna see more videos like this and let us know your questions about cycle touring. Throw those down in the comments comments below and do our best to answer every comment that we see. We really want to get more people out cycle touring and get people to push past those fear barriers that they might have. You know, a lot of us put a lot of fear blockades about cycle touring and what it is and isn't. So we're gonna have a lot more videos like this, just trying to encourage newbies to get out there, first time cycle tourists to feel confident on the road and let us know where you're planning to go, right? Make yourself accountable, throw it down there. Where's your dream cycle tour? You don't have to have all the special gear, all the special equipment. If you've got a bike and you've got some bags with you and you're traveling, by bicycle, you're a cycle tourist. All right, thanks for watching and remember to ride on. Bye. All right. Oh, <laughs> I just spiked myself. <laughs> Bonus tip there's really sharp parts on a bicycle, be careful. <laughs>